Thank you so much. Uh, what a powerful presentation we've heard this evening. Over the course of the last year, uh, I have uh, had uh, representatives from my office because usually the Welcoming Coalition has been meeting while Joaquin and I have been in Washington, uh, attend your meetings. Uh, most recently, Mary Ellen uh, Valise, who's my district director, being there. But there's nothing like hearing it ourselves and hearing this powerful uh, and emotional testimony. Uh, I uh, applaud the courage of those who are living their faith and exercising it in responding uh, to this situation. Uh, let me just respond one by one on your questions, and if there's time, I'll, I'll touch on other things. Uh, yes, I support uh, H.R. 2808. No, I don't believe that it goes far enough. Uh, I'm pleased that it would prohibit negotiating these bed mandates and, and quotas. Uh, it's a good start, but we need to end the quotas in both the private contracts and in the DHS appropriations bill. We've actually had a vote in Congress on an attempt to do that as an amendment to the Department of Homeland Security appropriations previously that we both uh, supported, uh, but we didn't have the votes to overcome a majority uh, that is in control of the House. Uh, currently, in further response to your question, H.R. 2808 is pending in the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, it's not a friendly place because it is also controlled by people that do not share our commitment to ending detention. Uh, second, uh, you ask uh, if we will continue urging President Obama and will work with our colleagues to bring about change. And yes, I certainly am committed to doing that. I think that the August 6 brief that Jonathan uh, so powerfully referred to about uh, family detention and the response to Judge G was just plain wrong. Uh, he made the case for why it is. Uh, locking up women and children in detention uh, just does not work. It's not the answer. You know, I first got involved in this before there was a Dilly and a Carnes, because before there was Dilly and Carnes, there was T. Don Hutto, and some of you were involved in protesting that. T. Don Hutto, uh, people were in prison uniforms, they got education uh, one hour a day, they spent about 12 hours uh, in their cell, and it was the humanizing and the response to the protest that finally shut down T. Don Hutto that produced Carnes, and originally uh, all of us got invitations to see what a humane place, what a nice place Carnes is. The problem is you just can't humanize prison and detention uh, for mothers and children, and that's what we've seen tonight. Uh, the administration uh, should be implementing Judge Gee's decision of a long ago florist decision, not appealing it. And uh, I applaud and salute uh, Congressman Castro for getting so many of our colleagues down here to see the conditions, and I would certainly uh, join in the comments he's already made and join uh, him in any uh, effort that we might make together with our colleagues to the administration. I remember when at that point it was Janet Napolitano came to our caucus uh, and told us about the limitations on the administration doing some of the things that it has now done. Originally the president said he did not have authority to, to respond to our dreamers. They have, he has responded, and as a result, so many dreamers right now are achieving their dreams and are contributing here in San Antonio. Uh, third, you ask about ankle monitors. Uh, I uh, think they're inhumane. They're not the way to treat uh, refugees who have asylum claims, and I'll work with you to find a more dignified and less burdensome solution. Fourth, you ask about campaign contributions. I have not sought am not seeking contributions from the private prison industry. I think you do have to follow the money, and I pledge to refuse such contributions uh, in the future. Uh, this <laughs> I mentioned T. Don Hutto. This has been a long fight. I first heard about this because of T. Don Hutto before I even had the honor of representing parts of Bear County. I've been involved in this struggle originally with the grassroots leadership, a fellow named Bob Libel who, who formed that group. Uh, and uh, continuing with Raices, I think uh, I've been involved in it now for about seven years. Uh, we are making some progress, 
but it is a fight that we need to renew and uh, engage more of our neighbors in trying to bring about change. And while I applaud the idea that uh, uh, Jonathan mentioned of using your phones to call us, keep in mind Joaquin and I are not the only two members of Congress from Texas. We, we just happen to be the two that are on your side uh, on this. And uh, Joaquin so powerfully noted what is happening uh, in New Hampshire tonight. Uh, I know that at least the pinata business has gained from uh, Donald Trump, <laughs> but that's about uh, the only thing good that's come out of really the poison that's been renewed uh, and the misinformation uh, that's out there. Uh, our Constitution guarantees every person a day in court, not just citizens of the United States, but immigrants who are waiting a determination on their asylum claims and their immigration status. Uh, prolonged detention makes it difficult for individuals to make that case and uh, DHS has deliberately picked places like originally Artesia, New Mexico in the middle of nowhere and Dilly and even Carnes though it's a little closer to make it difficult uh, to have access uh, to legal counsel. Uh, grassroots uh, and Raices uh, have met with our office just within the last few days to discuss further ways for us to be involved along with the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Lawyers need to be able to get access to process these claims because when they do, these claims are, are successful. The broader question of immigration reform awaits our attention. It is outrageous that people, even today, this afternoon, were still fighting the executive orders that the President uh, has issued. That is the pathway forward to us and hopefully after the next election the opportunity to get the immigration reform that we so very much thought would be forthcoming after it was approved on a bipartisan basis uh, by the United States Senate. That struggle has to continue. There is so much opportunity and hope out there and that's what brings us together tonight. Not only our faith but our hope and belief that enough of us are engaged working together we can make a difference. That's what uh, led to help for the dreamers. It's what can lead to the implementation of these executive orders that are being held up in the courts and it's what can end detention once and for all. I look forward to continuing to work with you in that effort. Thank you.